Cravings can last for years. I've got one in particular that's been lasting a long time, been lingering. I'm craving for one specific hug. Now, this isn't one of those creepy hugs where the hands might linger high, then maybe too low. (laughs) I'm craving for one when two people come together, something incredible is felt. It's almost like the hug becomes an antidote for the craving. Cravings and people fall in different categories. You have the first responder hugger who will hug anybody, any place, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> then there's a hugger backer who will also hug anybody, any place, anywhere, anytime. The reluctant acceptor turns every hug into a one-sided hug. Go ahead. Then there's the avoider who blocks every quick attempt. My dad fell into this category. When I was growing up, he would let you grab a hold of his leg, and if you held on long enough while he shook you or dragged you around the house, you could get your side of the hug in. Then if he decided to hug you back, it was like a grizzly bear attack. He would grab you and scoop you up. You would just fall limp. He would start squeezing. You'd feel your ribs start. You think they're breaking and you lose your breath. As a young boy, that was the greatest feeling in the world to know that someone loved you that much. January 21st, 1977, a normal school bus ride home in Slidell, Louisiana. When out of nowhere, police cars come zooming up and they pull the bus over. The officers walk on and they request that the four Moses children come off the bus. And when we do, they take us away and they tell us, there's been an accident involving your mom and your dad. I didn't know what to say. I just sat there wondering, what type of accident sends two police cars to a school bus? The accident, as we were told, happened at a small pond a few blocks from our house. My parents had stopped there supposedly to satisfy some adult cravings. (laughs) What kind of kid wants to know about that? But I have vivid images of what was going on at that pond. Not the adult stuff, but the environment. There were large bullfrogs, sticky tongue and everything that moved, and crawdads building those little mud castles they like so much, and giant snapping turtles, the ones with a neck so long they could reach around and touch their back, sunbathing on those busted up tree logs. All this activity was going on before everything got scattered by the sound of a gunshot. One single gunshot. And then after this day, hiding on the top bunk, waiting for my dad to come in the bedroom, then leaping like I was doing a professional wrestling move and landing on his back, and wrapping my arms around him real tight and turning that into a hug. I got you. Stopped. And then crawling behind the couch, getting real close to his recliner. Then jumping like I was doing a belly flop in a swimming pool competition, landing on him and wrap my arms around him real tight and turn that into a hug. I got you. This ended. But the craving... It grew daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and I kept searching for that antidote everywhere. January 21st, 1977. This was the day that my dad was shot. The day he died. 
And now, even now, 16,559 days later, I am still craving one more grizzly bear hug attack. Thank you.